Good morning, Vietnam! Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Good morning, Arkansas! Yes, okay, there we go. Now, tracking back, you know, Arkansas would make a great place to do a Vietnam-era film. It really would. You know, you got all these great, thick, forested areas. You know, it would be fun, you know. But, that having been said, we wouldn't want to necessarily do it in the peak of summer. It might be a little too hot. Oh, I don't want anybody to slap me. Now, there's one thing that you definitely have a lot of in Arkansas. Green. You've got lots of green. And you got a lot of water. Water. There's lots of water there. And sometimes people are worried about there being too much water. Uh, sometimes people, well, they die, they drown. So the plan is simple. The plan is simple for Arkansas. We're going to take water that's normally in danger of killing you, and we're going to sell it and derive profit for each and every citizen in Arkansas, $12,000 a year. That's the laid out goal for this. Plus, there can be possible additional participations in electrical co-ops. But to start off with, basically the idea here is to do this as a multi-state regional option. It makes sense. We're going to save lives. We're going to find new ways to create new holding areas for the water. We're going to basically invent new forms of high-speed pump technology to be able to grab a hold of, well, possibly muddy water and deal with the muddy water factor and shoot that water at high speed through high pressure pipes over, well, some serious distance. The idea is we want to get them to areas where we can hold that water safely. I want you to please pay attention. I am talking about 12,000 bucks a year per citizen. Now, I just happen to know a couple folk in Arkansas, and they would generally appreciate an extra $12,000 a year uh, from selling the water. And there is a lot of water. A lot, a lot, a lot of water. Now, one of the interesting things is, is I think we also know about certain storm patterns ahead of time. I mean, this is aside from the generalized Arkansas. You know, if you don't like the weather, stick around. It'll change in 20 minutes. Now, Anyone who's been to Arkansas, we know this. We, we, we know this is how this is. You know, and we understand when it starts to rain, it could just decide to drop it down so much that all you can see is your windshield. You don't even know you have a hood beyond that. You know, but, but seriously, uh, there's a lot of water in Arkansas, and we can do something with this. So those ideas of saying, well, if you can imagine that we understand many of these big storm patterns coming ahead, uh, coming in ahead of time. We know 24 hours in advance, and if we know that our status uh, with the river uh, is basically at a very high level, we can begin pumping water out high speed 24 hours in advance. There's a lot of ways you can do this. The way I perceive this is that basically we can actually have pickup pipes, hopefully, hopefully, I do understand there's a mud consideration. This is something was pointed out as I was talking with people working over the years on this. We can have pipes basically all the way down the river, all the way down through Louisiana, all the way, you know, to the point where you're meeting salt. Because there's such a huge flood of, of fresh water, it's actually damaging the sea life. You've got all this mud that's been depositing it makes problems for sea life. You know, it's actually pushed the sea life situation out quite a ways and I you know there's actually a damage factor from this won't go into that there's people talk about that but so in other words if we realize that we can somehow tap into this water we can harvest into this water that we can look at being able to tap into it for the entire length of the state of course yeah I, I did mention uh, Louisiana yes but and there's other states as well because we're talking about other states that have flooding as well. And we know this. We know this. So what we have to do is we have to figure out where are we going to put this water? We can, the water's there. Definitely got water. How are we going to grab the water? 
how are we going to move the water, where are we going to move the water to. So I think that all of these are very doable, very, very doable. And if we expand a plan, let's say we go all the way up to Canada, there can even be different routes where I think there's a wide open opportunity to realize that we can get a hold of a lot of water. And which way are we going to put it? You know, I mean, we could pump it to the east, but the east is like we got a lot of water, got same situation, kind of sorta, you know. But if you ship it west, you have people with deserts, like lots of deserts. It's like, hey, I noticed y'all got deserts. Are you interested in water? And they're like, we will buy all the water you want to sell. And I think this is kind of sort of like a great vision, you know. And this just kind of goes up, if you look, it kind of goes right up through pretty, kind of sort of the center of the country, slightly to the left, all the way up in through Canada. So yeah, we should talk to Canada too. We really, really get together with Canada. Because we've got these huge fire problems. I mean, if you're in Arkansas, everything's green, it's soaking. There's really not a fire problem in Arkansas. I mean, Arkansas, it's like you're driving down the road, there's a tree on fire, and you go, oh my goodness, there's a tree on fire, and you, you call 911, and they go, oh, um, hold on a minute, I want you to just, just, just look at it. Just describe what you see. You know, and for five minutes, this guy is asking additional questions. You're just describing what you're seeing, and then it's kind of saying, well, it doesn't sound like it's moving very fast. Uh, someone's going to notice it nearby. They'll take care of it. Sounds like it's kind of sort of minding its own business. Now, obviously, obviously, if you came from out of state like, well, maybe California, you would be in a form of shock at this moment. But this is something that would be kind of standardized to firefighting understanding in Arkansas. You know, because you do have these areas where there's lots of moisture, there's lots of trees, and the fire's really not going to go very far. You know, th this of course takes into the account of, of, you know, you were asked those questions, you know, is there any bales of hay, is there dry brush, yada yada, you know, all these other stuff. So, uh, you've gone past that. So. But uh, anyhow, back to the water. I'm serious, $12,000 a year. A mega water deal can be done. And there's plenty of states that will buy the water. You could even ship the water all the way to California. I mean, I guarantee you there are people that are in New Mexico, they want water, Texas. Texas has got a lot of water, but Texas might be interested in working some kind of deal because you got a lot of up and down. That means you can work different types of power options creatively to move this water along. You can have, when it goes downhill, it generates energy. And when it's got to go uphill, you might have more solar panels that help assist grabbing energy from the sun, converting it, and moving that water again. So this is definitely complex. And hey, look, uh, I'm into computers. AI, AI can work with this get some AI CAD going, this can happen. So, as a reality, you know, moving things forward is really big. So that's part of what my presidential campaign is about, is that I've been committed since 2005 to the, to the Cal Arc or the Arc Cal project, basically to try to deal with sensibly figuring out how to make a mass commitment to water. And the more I've researched it over the years, the more I've come to the conclusion that there's a lot of other states that want water, and that Canada needs to manage water. And you know, basically, North America is burning down, and and this isn't funny, you know. And obviously, the one way to help out with a situation like that is if you you know you, you need water to fight fire. The best you're still going to need water, you know. And there's all these other facets you can do but you need water. So moving this water will help open open land up. You know, that means more areas of land where people can say, hey, I want to buy an acre, two and a half, five acres, whatever. And we can have land uh, being distributed once again. Uh, we can deal with the advanced forest items. There's a lot of forest items out there where it's, it's uh, well, you know, it's like miracle Grow. you know. You know, the miracle Grow for fruits and vegetables, the eating one. You could, uh, that's the one I'd use. You put that in there and you can get a 40-foot tall forest in like seven plus years. No joke here. So like under 15 years, you can have an 80-foot high uh, 
set of trees. No joke here. So uh, this is real. I mean, this is real. This is our lifetime real. You know, this is, this is, we started getting involved in doing this when the kids were, you know, two years old. And by the time they're 20, they'll be able to go out places and do camping. Okay, yeah, so, you know, maybe, maybe the truth here is that's not exactly forests that are going to be restored to Arkansas. That's not that we, you couldn't use the water in Arkansas too, but, um, yeah, seriously, I mean, um, uh, these are going to be other places, yes, but then again, it's $12,000 a year. This is a very doable goal, and this changes the entire uh, uh, the entire economy for the state of Arkansas. This is every citizen, every head of household. You know, I'm sorry, you're under 18. Uh, well, you got to get to, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, this, this makes complete sense. This is doable. This is going to make a lot of jobs. I mean, the proposal I'm looking at, I, I, I say, hey, look, let's just go big with this. You know, why not just make sure that, that every company that lays pipe is at 100% capacity? That's jobs. We can do this. We actually can do this. So there's a lot of other things to look at here uh, on the project. I mean, I can update you a little bit more, or I can, you know, I can move on. There's some other things I want to talk about. How about if I'm just going to, you know, I can get back to it. There'll be another part talking about other logistics. Uh, I have to get some more material uh, back. Basically, there's a, a slight problem with uh, people that have attacked archives. I lost 18 mobile campaign RVs. It's really, really bad. But let me let me talk some more about some of the other things we can do uh, in Arkansas. You know, I want to talk about education, the system that I designed uh, with massive archiving that way, uh, and, and experimenting and understanding what's available and the changes. Um, well, you know, actually, I might mention that I did a lot of computers. I was doing computers in various areas of the state. Some people may have, may have ran into me at various auctions. I know people might remember me around Conway, Arkansas, for sure, and some in Little Rock. You know, basically, I put out around 10,000 computers in a seven-year period. A lot of them were sold, basically, regardless of loss. And this was a supplement item that the nonprofit did. And, I mean, I changed a lot of people's lives. A lot of people got a hold of computers. A lot of people that had small businesses participated in getting a hold of computers and marking them up just a little bit and, and getting those out to other people and people could find affordable computers. Uh, and, and this helped people. This helped kids, you know. It really did help families. You know, there, there was the big problem with the Dead Co. Fire. Uh, some people that would know me might remember that. That kind of... 3,400 types of chemicals on everything. It, it really, it ruined the inventory, it ruined the nature of the business, and I've still not been compensated for that. That was about uh, about 1.4 million dollars in damage. It it really hurts. That's a lot of damage when you're in Arkansas. You know, I, I had two complete uh, sets for 24 track studios with eight cameras each. I was going to do some a uh, little bit of filmmaking in Arkansas. You know, when I got around to it, and I was going to do some other stuff. But I had this huge computer lab stuff I was doing. And, um, you know, I had to work with computers and get a hold of custom stuff. And one of the best ways to get a hold of custom stuff was I was stuck with, well, you can pay $14,000 for this card or $34,000 for this card. Or you can realize that there's a two-year-old version sitting in this huge pile of computers that the government's selling someplace or a company at an auction. And it's like, ooh, that might be good. So I discovered that a good way to get a hold of custom equipment is to buy lots, buy these huge deals with all of this equipment and computers all combined. And there's medical equipment, all kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, it didn't work. It was, it, 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 it was toast. But uh, what are you going to do with the computers? So I, I, you know, I, I just kept putting the computers together. You know, I mean... Uh, it was a real hammer operation, so to speak. I got asked to go to one of the uh, colleges once by one of the professors. He says, you got to show this to, your, to, to my students. I, and uh, so I showed him how you take a pallet and basically repair a pallet worth of computers in like three hours. You know, it's like, wow, this is incredible. You know, yeah, I'm going to show you how to fix 80 computers in three hours, you know. 
So uh, the, uh, the the professor was kind of impressed with that, you know. So that was a little bit of fun. But no, seriously. So I did a lot of archiving. Some people did gaming. Some of us did uh, some talk on scientific, medical, various other things. And but most of most of a lot of what I did was liquidating computers, regardless of loss. Uh, at auctions, you know, I mean, there were people who bought computers for seven or ten or fifteen dollars. You know, I mean, that happened. You know, a lot of times twenty, twenty-five bucks. You know, so uh, you know, if, if you spent seventy-five dollars, you probably got a really decent computer at that time. You know, so I, I'd really like to revamp and do all that again. You know, but I still didn't recover from the debt co thing because between the debt co and then these these other insane violent attack people and. Um, criminals uh, in government, so to speak, uh, that have harassed me illegally. Uh, Arkansas has testified on my behalf. That's I appreciate that. Really do appreciate that. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Arkansas, you, I'm sorry, guys, you've lost about 20,000 computers, basically getting liquidated regardless of loss, practically given away, sometimes given away. Uh, in Arkansas, so I'm, I'm sorry to say that, that uh, that happened. You guys have have lost 20,000 computers for at an affordable level over since basically the debt co fire situation. So, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, I am trying to get it all back on the feet. I've got the archives going again. And as I get them going, I came under huge violent attacks again. I lost uh, 14 um, uh, mobile RV archives. Uh, these were set up to do, uh, I was experimenting with the 5,000, 10,000 foot uh, Wi-Fi, the capability of going anywhere, a uh, rock concert or anything, and just boom, you light these things up and it's Wi-Fi, everybody could tap in to the most advanced computer system with all these advanced AI helpers and everything. I worked very hard to design that. I worked very, very hard to build that. And it was on the verge of just activating and bang, you know, um, uh, crazy stuff started happening, you know, crazy violence and uh, really horrible. And of course, the, the state of uh, California shut everything down, you know, it was a stay at home, everything's ordered shut down. I couldn't do any public activity. The attorney says, you can't do this, you're a nonprofit, or they'll give you a fine, and, and the fine looks like a health and safety code violation towards. Uh, people of all ages, including children, he says you don't want them to put that violation on it because the way it's worded, it makes you, it's going to make you. It'll be like the you know the death signature hooked to your nonprofit. So I, I couldn't do that by attorney's advice, and the sheer fact that there were so many things shut down. What I was doing because I was going back and forth between states, but what I was doing in, our, in California at the time. I got stuck. I got blacklisted on some different stuck stuff. I had family there. And it was just, it, it frankly was inexcusable, uh, the kind of things that some of the leaders allowed uh, to happen in California. And I really want to prosecute some of these government employees that did these, these bad things. But of course, people in Arkansas wouldn't necessarily care about that, you know. So, um, but, you know, I am a presidential candidate, and moving issues development forward is very important because there's all kinds of other things that are connected to issues development that can change your lives, you know. I mean, I developed uh, my 20-year-old AI work uh, makes makes my economic and my security and military advance plan, my border plan, use SAR, there's no escape. Uh, it, I, I just, it's like blows everybody else away and nobody knows that this Superman plan was built, you know, that I used all these computers and built this super AI system, you know, and border guys. Border guys would have... Um, you know, like um, the SAR satellite would be able to see all this stuff, and they already use drones, but in conjunction, they'd have all this stuff. They would know days ahead of time stuff that was moving. They already get a little bit of intelligence like that, but this was something to be coupled with AI. So the paperwork would be like pre-made. It would be like, you know, so many people are coming over here and they're gonna be crossing. We are, we're estimating the amount of paperwork that you need. We're pre-filling it out. We've got a whole bunch of individuals. We're looking for, here are their sizes and shapes and sexes and everything. And so, you know, basically, they ID somebody, you know, and as they're IDing who they're finding, 
the computer with AI identifies, whoop, and it's got a sheet, and it says, okay, we're looking for these extra properties we already discovered. You know, SAR is accurate. It can see a blade of grass from outer space. So, you know, like, it looks down, you know, it's, it's going to see 70% of an object. You know, that means no escape. You know, you're a dot that can't escape. But then you can keep tracking the dots. This means safety. This means all these people who come to the country are either going back and getting rejected or they're being allowed to process forms and stay in the country. But think about this. These people are basically on probation. They're being tracked. They're being tracked. And they're told, look, this is the way the system works. It's being tracked. And if you're saying that there are people potentially threatening you, we can have a hot button right here on this app. It goes into your cell phone. And you can press if you have people doxing you or that they're after you, uh, you can just tell us and, and, and we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll bring security in. But here's the other thing. Having a policy this way, think about this, having the policy where there's no escape and you say, look, uh, everything's recorded and then reprocessed later with computers as well. And you know what? Uh, hey, there is no escape. You know, and, and this is the best border protection plan. This is the one that has a, a 100% no escape item this way. So no, you know, terrorists, but they come in the country, we're tracking them. This is the system. You know, the, this is the, the, the SAR system. And it deals with working with other people that did other technology and then upgrade it. I mean, if I spent a billion dollars on this, wow, wow. You know, we're talking security that would be mind blowing. It also has individual security for everybody else. You know, the, there's there's an interactive way where people could say, I want to know if there's a possible threat. And the system would be able to alert them on their cell phone and actually give them radiographic data to alert them, you know. I mean, of all different stuff, you know. You could also hook onto the system and say, yeah, uh, I want to know if any of these people that just came in the country uh, trap trespass my property to rob me. Well, they're on probation, so that's the way this, this system works. Some people think that's a bit too intrusive. Well, what do you think? I think it, it adds security for everyone. And there's so many more facets to it. But uh, I need to move on and talk about some of the other ideas here, the other, the other items. So I want to talk about education. Now, um, I'm going to talk about I was working on a big plan to massively upgrade education options for Arkansas. That was part of building the archive to have these incredibly powerful options that would be basically at everybody's fingertips, but they would definitely be affecting your kids. You know, the, the children would have had new fantastic options. It was mind-boggling. And of course, you know, this is part of the archive that's that's been hit several times. I keep trying to repair it, and then boom, the archive gets attacked again. And uh, let me let me let me tell you to give you an idea before I do, let me jump away from Arkansas. But it's important to Arkansas, what I'm going to say right now. Let me talk about the design system that I came up with for Los Angeles. Because Los Angeles had one of the most diversified series of education systems. So it was a great model to look at and understand what was going on there and then downsize and then understand, well, what's wrong with it? What can be done with it, etc. So basically, uh, uh, K through 12, uh, 13 years of schooling, had a funding situation. It was a $494,000. Call it a half million bucks. Half million bucks uh, for 13 years of schooling. And the way I saw it is, is that half that money never made it to the campus. I mean, half that money had nothing to do with the campus, with the teachers, uh, with the heads of department, uh, with books going to the students. This just went off to half of the money would go off to um, management. So my plan was cut that right off, snip, and that, and get half the money back. So no way we're going to send a qu uh, quarter million dollars, which is 50% of the fund, away for management. Forget it. It's not supplying anything. So uh, now, for other 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 states do things differently. Keep in mind, other states do not do things the way other you know on the on the LA the LA system. Basically, I was going to take that money, re-evaluate the situation, which I did, which I did, and basically make that money available and restore original colonial constitutional work sets. You know, the year 1750, 12 to 14-year-olds had basic carpentry. 
It was there. You know, it was part of survival. You had to build the equivalent in board feet of a two-bedroom home. You know, so that's what I did. So this was incorporated into a plan where creative and outsourcing for different types of classes from different sources, a lot of private sources. I mean advanced stuff. I mean all the way up to you want to learn advanced filmmaking? These courses are available. And there's no reason that, that junior high and high school kids can't absorb this information. And frankly, I don't see reason why you can't have younger people also absorb some of this. This material, they can still also get something out of it. it it's easy. When they do the, do the test, there's a curve on it. It's not expected for them to immediately understand everything, but we'll work with this. We'll get this done. So there's all these other courses, electrical, plumbing, um, decorating, painting, uh, network installation, network cable installation, Wi-Fi installation, uh, multi-computer networking, respective to the new version of what I believe should be basically the great standing desk. That's five computers uh, per person. That's a standing desk, in my view, five computers. And it's cheap. You can buy, you know, basically I had it worked out to uh, $1,000 would buy basically three laptops uh, at a wholesale mass deal that had a lot of memory in them. Basically, these things would have had um, 32 to 64 gigabytes of memory. These will run language models. These will run AI. So this means that, uh, that basically guaranteeing that the kids are going to be able to get access to five computers and this AI stuff to help them. They get assistance to help them research stuff. They learn more about archiving, they learn more about research, they learn more about assembly, and they have the per perfect tooling at any given time to help them with any kind of project that they wanted. This was the most powerful education proposal in history. You know, of course, yeah, it kind of got destroyed. Um, you know, so this basically, the whole system put together basically was going to be a system where you have students working part-time, they're working on their own projects, they're building their own houses. They're going to sell them, they make a profit. They're going to pay themselves. They're going to gain assets in the equity. Part of the project is they're going to make money with the equity when they sell it. And, and this is a good thing, by the way. It's a really good thing. And the way it works out is, you know, graduating 18, Basically, you would have the equivalent worked out to like 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars in the bank, depending upon certain people's variance on, on how diligent they were on working. And they would qualify basically because they'd have all this money, they'd have these skill sets that were what? Skill sets that were proven. Skill sets that were proven, and they would still be expanding in, in education. The, you know, this included a, a whole bunch of uh, archive acquisition, computer acquisition, all in this education uh, hookup together. Uh, so basically they'd be qualified to basically start at $200,000 a year. How's that? Age 18, you qualify for 200000 and you're bankable to immediately keep building houses. This protects your future. This is what part of what I was building. And uh, a tragedy on that. But So if we go back to so we go back to Arkansas. Arkansas was working on a different system, which was, I think it was a little over $14,000 a year at the time I initially had researched it. So that would be, you know, 13 years um, times uh, 14000 You know, so uh, my plan there was a bit different. You know, my plan there was still saying, you know, we really need to do a five computer system, but if not, can we do the thousand dollar deal, three laptops, three computers, do the, do the, do the three laptop computer standing desk. And uh, there, there were other creative ways to get other types of uh, computer enhancements, additional computers, used computers, bulk buy used computers, basically distributed to kids to families so that they would have uh, access to internet, and they'd be able to do all this stuff, and they'd be able to tap into the schooling stuff. And the main archives that I was building basically would be very similar, very similar to, to the L.A. stuff. The only difference would be when you're talking about discussing and sitting down about building and doing what, 
integration, you're talking more of modular home construction, modular frame construction. Um, you're talking about working interactively with the various businesses and having them participate in part of the teaching and in part of the developing. You're talking about a harmonious partnership was the idea that I was working with. It was, it was a bit different for Arkansas. And there are a lot of other different ways to explore uh, what type of building construction options are because uh, the sales overall for Arkansas has a different uh, variant. I mean, yeah, you have some variants that are neighborhoods that are very similar to LA, but it, it's not the LA style uh, build a three or four hundred thousand dollar home that costs you wholesale one hundred and eighty-seven to maybe you know two hundred thousand. That's not the same in Arkansas. Um, Basically, in Arkansas, 80 grand will build you pretty close to the same thing. Um, it was a different situation. So, working with that and making the adjustments was something to be finalized to work with community parents and all that stuff. And I didn't get to uh, the finalized point. There were just too many distractions. The Detco fire, uh, and I tried to work as much on on moving the design of projects forward and other items that were of key importance. Uh, but again, I, I run into the tragedy. But I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm running again, and I'm setting this up. And there's a lot of people, by the way. There's people who owe me vast amounts of money. They owe me a lot, a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of people who donated things uh, into the archive. You know, so um, I'm going to, you know, these things have to be replaced. You know, full replacement. You know, so there's there's punitive damages, all this other stuff, uh, all these other law aspects. So I have some people that owe me. A lot of money. I mean, like billions of dollars. You know, so uh, they're supposed to pay. Uh, the law says the law says that elections cannot proceed forward in allowed counting, cannot allow counting of delegates or certification of delegates, unless all matters concerning attacks or acts of war upon a candidate are resolved beforehand. That means everything has to be resolved. That means financial compensation. That means readjustment and disclosure to each and every voter. You know, you know that's total archive restoration. Uh, with the California factor, it's, it's uh, 18 total um, mobile broadcast RV units. 18. I mean, if you imagine that. I mean, basically, I could have deployed that and basically accommodated... Um, the Coliseum in Los Angeles, all the people in the Coliseum, 100,000 people, 100,000 people with that kind of a, a setup. There were ways to do that. And um, so, <clears throat> you know, so basically uh, there were different ways to get those access points in and utilize the existing cellular structures nearby and be able to service uh, that. So this is incredibly powerful. I mean, if you can imagine... Uh, you know, Little Rock, uh, you know, you only get a little bit of traffic. You know, traffic's like maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> In L.A., traffic's like two, three hours. It's really insane. So um, you have all these highways, massive traffic. So you're just running 14, just uh, if the question was 12, 14 uh, RVs uh, running prime times of the day on and off the highways, clover loops, whatnot, that the access was a million plus people a day. A million plus people a day. So... Uh, this has basically been over a year that I still haven't been compensated, which means that I've been losing a million people a day, a day, uh, being able to see my RVs, my plan, my campaign, hooked to my website designs. So I'm saying that this is fraud. You know, I'm filing, I filed papers on this. I'm working with the legalism in this. I'm saying this is wrong. These people are monsters. And they're destroying archives. And the Constitution of the United States is clear. You do not attack our archives. If you attack archives, museums, or destroy artifacts, those all come with the death penalty. It's mandatory. So I'm saying, hey, look, I'm pressing charges. You know, and I'm, I'm especially sick and tired of, of, of government people in California uh, basically uh, shirking their responsibilities and the kind of their kind of conduct is just inexcusable. They need to be processed. They need to be punished. They need to go to prison, in my view. I, I you know, some people might think that I may be really, really a little brutal here, but I, I, I feel strongly about that. I think this is the right thing because my campaign was about more than California. It was about Arkansas. It was about 
about another five, seven, nine states that I was going to be working on really hard to see how it would have went, you know. And there's a lot of lifetime work that went into that. And there's other people's lifetime work that was donated into it, too. We're talking enormous amount of work. Nobody has the right to destroy archives. <clears throat> okay, so sorry, I got back off on some of that. I feel strongly about it. It's hard to find people that, that think that that's important. But uh, there's a lot of other things uh, that uh, would affect Arkansas with, with what I'm talking about in the presidency. I mean, even though I don't win, the issues for development, at least it used to, build more to the archive, you get things closer and closer to these big plans, and then it would have been a 24-7. The idea was this time, this time past year, I was going to activate, actually a little further back, I was going to activate the, basically the campaign, and it was going to never stop. It was going to be a 24-7 special access, special archiving, special AI options, services for everybody to help them with a wide array uh, of items that way. It was, it's to be become the permanent archive uh, with a, a set of really specialized features available nationally. It was not going to be internationally, it was just going to be nationally. So, uh, but, um, so, so uh, the, the idea of what I'm trying to recover and get going and if I can get the financial coverage means that my campaign still moves other items forward, other issues development other things that are important to people's lives, changing and upgrading their education, changing and upgrade financial options, changing and participating in community co-op uh, items, maybe small power companies here and there, uh, increasing your income. If I win the big one or get, get more support or someone says we like the idea, let's move it forward, that can mean the, the $12,000 a year plan can take hold. And that would make a big difference in everybody's life. Uh, this is a major major item I feel you know uh, so there's that you know so uh, my campaign has a lot of viability it's not just a dog and pony show coming through or this or that you know it's not a memeism it's not a grandstand it's 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 about solid issues development and working forward with good ideas and changing people's lives so as I'm trying to set up the 24 7 instructions for how to use this where you use other um, companies. You can use other companies. Uh, I wanted to contract larger with these companies. I can't at the moment until after compensation occurs. I'm suing over that. Uh, but basically, I'm, I'm setting up, finishing up sets of instruction types to get posted onto a website. I still haven't got there yet. We're still working on it. So people can get the, the, the items. I've already got one video that's given a couple videos out there that give people ideas on, on how to deal with um, basically using OpenAI, using ChatGPT to interactively work with it. You can ask it almost anything and it will kind of sort of help you. It'll give you a lot of other stuff that's really a diversion and you're going to look at it and go, why did it tell me I needed 92 people to build a two-bedroom house? Yeah, I can do that sometimes. So, you know, you got to just cut through it, you know. So part of me understanding AI was cutting out all of that extra uh, redundant, non-necessary stuff and just streamlining it, just boom, just streamlining it down and say, no, no, we want these type of people, we want to do these ads, we want to work with the custom cabinet builders that do the hardwood cabinets, we want to work with all these other different people that, that have these super skills and how things are going to go. So that having been said, my main presidency guarantees a stop to loan discrimination. This means that anybody that has one member of their family or more uh, they go back 150 years or more, it's vested at the super vestation level. I call that the seven vestation level because you're entitled to all these things because your family participated in these. You paid these dues. You paid these dues, so you're entitled to extra vestation. But normal vestation for a normal citizen still says that no discrimination for your labor. Your labor is bankable. This means that you can get a loan, you can get completion bond guarantee, insurance covered right into the loan. You wrap it all up in the loan same. It's a mini version of what, what, what developers would do. You know, and it's, you know, if you, you, know, you need to sub out and get help, it's just what developers would do. You can do the same thing. It's all wrapped into the loan, one big package, and basically you can use a graduated payment loan. In other words, you can say, let's graduate this, this loan, like take it like a teeter-totter. Let's just 
tip it a little bit because we want to make the payments easier at first and allow for time for real estate to go up in value just a little bit. And that way we can make this work smoother for people's lives because uh, you know, let me explain the bonus end of this. Part of the bonus end is that it's important for people to understand this. The government has always added up how much interest gets charged at banks. And they print money against that because they look at it like they're making crypto. You know, you, you invent interest, it gets paid in. Well, the money has to come from someplace or the bank could have all the money and the economy would end. So the government prints a match of all interest charged from the bank. Some people say it's discrimination, it's oligarchy, and all this other stuff about moving forward. So if we're looking at an understanding that there's another area, and the other area is super asset development, our, our forefathers, we used to have a plan, we had it running very heavily, and that was to develop hard assets, mostly real estate, as fast as possible. You know, businesses, sawmills, furniture companies, anything that would build a longevity style of asset. You know, something that's non-perishable, you know. So uh, this is not to say farming is different. I'm, I'm really on for the farming. we will talk about that later. But so basically, you'd be guaranteed loans kind of sort of repeatedly, you know. So that even if you didn't have a job, if you don't have a job, your labor is bankable. Even if you have a little disability, your labor is still bankable. You can sub out and have other people help you on the construction job. So there's a lot of ways to do this. You have to be careful how you select your land in Arkansas and where to build. Uh, and and, and you, know, you want to look at your demographics for is it better to build over here versus over there? What, what real estate's going to go up in value property? Then again, what is more affordable to do? How do you want the payments to be? We're, you know, all of this. So guaranteeing that the basic skills of, of citizens in the year 1750 as we were forming this country must be put back into the hands. Basic carpentry rights have to be put back into the hands of every citizen and they cannot be banned from building their own home. You know, so, uh, so that's it's a big thing. So this is homes for everybody. There is nobody, there is nobody that has an effective balance plan design like I have done uh, with this stuff. So if we explain the flip, flip side of this, our forefathers from the very beginning designed the original, the original most beneficial, solid uh, idea to deal with the economy was to facilitate trade was that when someone made a hard asset, its retail value is different than the wholesale. Basically, the rule of thumb is 70 cents on the dollar. So if you build a, a, a $300,000 home, um, it's going to cost you ninety th easily ninety thousand dollars less wholesale value. So the government looks at the differential in the created assets, and one of the main factors that it prints money against is says that's the wholesale value laid out money and labor. There's an evaluation there too, but the difference between the wholesale to the retail has to be printed because that's like creating interest. That's going to sell. Someone's going to sell that. Therefore, the government's going to say, okay, we're going to print the 30 cents on the dollar and spend it. That's how the government originally got the money. That's how our forefathers got the money, and it's all based upon solid asset growth plans. And that's, that's my entire stimulus is solid asset. Put the hands of making solid assets back into the hands of every citizen, guaranteed, guaranteed. And, uh, you know, so that ends up equating, and if I win the presidency, basically the, the national plan at bare minimum, at bare minimum, still comes up with statistical estimates uh, that um, the average person is going to build one home a year uh, that is going to participate at a 1 25th, uh, at a ratio of 25%. This is to say that only one quarter, one quarter of citizens building one home a year uh, basically would afford uh, an understanding of $90,000 that the government could print that would be considered solid. That's into the rock-solid plan 
never uh, never causes inflation. It's always been the rock solid equating scheme that you you equate on the on the balance. You know that the, you know you know someone does the it's, it's on a balance. You know if you, you're creating more assets, there has to be more currency uh, equal, on an on a e equilibrium to facilitate trade or causes people to have their labor devalued and markets to crash. So this is a solid system system. And this is not this is not a print and spend program. This is a build program. Build, build, build. And they're only loaning the money. So uh, the, the, the the print part of it comes out that what the government already does as a formula anyhow. So that means that the ratio I just said comes up with ninety thousand dollars. So there's one in four uh, citizen population will build a home uh, in that zone as a minimum zone. Uh, statistical average. Some people will build a bigger home, but the statistical average averaged out between all of this to spare you the big complicatedness comes to ninety thousand dollars times uh, one quarter the citizens of the United States. That comes out to basically, um, uh, basically uh, like um, eight trillion dollars a year that the government would be able to print. This means that we could pay off the national debt in three, three and a half years, no problem. Uh, and we could start talking about, okay, if the national debt's paid off, um, why don't we all get a cut of some of that money that's printed as part of our income? Because you're printing, think about this, they're printing money, and they've been doing this for a long time, based upon your labor. <laughs> your, it's what you built. You know, so they're printing money against it. So, um, and part of the original plan historically, it's hard to explain this. There were these different fragments of information. Was that eventually uh, all citizens would be like partners, have stock residual, and that even the printing of currency would have a handout for people to be able to use for new hard asset development. Well, you know, and and it's hard to find those in history. Again, it was it was one of the specialities of the archive um, to show these things and why they're important. So basically, that covers some of the main points of my uh, campaign. I'm hoping to set up. I did originally want to set up dedicated shows and have dedicated uh, RV units running around uh, Arkansas. Uh, I'm not sure where that's at right now. Everything's delayed. People don't want to pay back their debt that they owe me. Uh, they don't want to prosecute these people. Uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. This, this, this fraud, this interference with elections, and it's directly happening to me. I have the evidence. I have the evidence. So this is very important because we have to restore archive. This is people's future, and it has to be restored. So I was hoping to have uh, do a series of of creations of show, and and you know, and, and start out doing shows. And this is Arkansas. So that's about the end of the time slot I got right now. So I have to uh, get with you another time. So this is part of the plan. And I'm going to tell you I've just barely scratched the surface. I have the best educational plan that anybody's ever come up with. And it is going to be groundbreaking. And it can change the lives of every citizen and every child in Arkansas. My name is Michael Crosby. I'm running for POTUS 2024. Thank you.